Hey, good evening, campers. A very happy Thursday to you all. I hope you've had a good one. It's bloody wet. It's bloody cold down here in old Melbourne town. So hopefully those of you elsewhere in our fair country are having a bit of a better day weather-wise. Gang, first off, as always, I want to know how was your Thursday out of 10? Please post your scores in the comment section below. Let me know how you are flowing. Just give us an idea as to where your vibe is at. Give us any of your success stories. As always, we always love sharing the success here on the Ask Andy Show. That's what it's all about, sharing the success of, of others so that we can all get ourselves up and about again. It's not an ego play. It is a happiness sharing play. Gang, I've had a really cool day today. I've had a really cool day. I've been pretty productive. Um mostly because I uh, had a very good chat with a very good chat uh, for my first show of the property line, which will be broadcast every Monday, 7 p.m., uh, every Monday, from this coming Monday. So hopefully a few of you might, t might tune in. And I reckon you probably should because the first guest I have gone top, shelf straight away i've come out swinging with my first guest and i reckon it's well worth the listen to the conversation that we had today yeah really really good some incredible little insights that it'll it will absolutely give you some clues as to how you can best navigate the course of the next three to six months like brilliant absolutely brilliant so if i don't say so myself so gang make sure you tune into property tv.io this coming monday at 7 p.m for my formal debut shall we say as the host of property like i keep going to say the hit show property line hopefully it'll be a hit at some point but um you know i think let's just let's just start relatively conservatively so again make sure you get across that please because and i'll post some links up as and when they get put up and all that um but the conversation i had with this absolute you know upper echelon type character of the real estate space uh, it was brilliant absolutely fantastic so i'd beg you to to watch that one actually um gang um yeah and aside from that it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad at all um now here's a question that i've been copying so often over the especially recently whenever it, whenever people are short on stock i always get asked this question or whenever a new starter whenever a new salesperson started in our team and i would i one of the first things i'd do i'd get them in the car take them on a tour around everywhere to make sure they're familiar with everything and all that sort of stuff but it also gave us a chance to really have a bit of a get to know session while i was driving them around and I, literally it's almost at the same point of the drive back when I would get asked, so Andy, what's the best way to prospect to get listings? It's like one of the most common questions ever, uh, ever. And and gang, what I want to do is, at the end of the day, the short answer is all of them are worth doing, right? And I'm not right for those of you that really don't believe that the traditional forms of prospecting are valid anymore. You're sorely mistaken. Now, does there need to be more of a balance? 100%. But some of that bread, some of those bread and butter tasks, and we'll talk about them in a sec, are 100% still relevant in today's marketplace, which I know is not what a lot of you want to hear, but it is the truth. I'm telling you now, if I was still an agent on the front line, I'd still be doing the bread and butter traditional tasks that have served this real estate space for God knows how many years, all right? So what I wanna do instead of talk about what type of prospecting works best, because I'm telling you now, gang, you need to do all of it. You need to do your drops, your knocks, your calls, your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, if you're a BDM especially, LinkedIn. Um, and if you're a sales manager as well, or a director, I would highly recommend that you get onto LinkedIn as well. Um, networking. 
uh, all of those sorts of things. You need to be doing all of it, okay? Open for inspections are a form of prospecting uh, because if you're asking the right questions, you're going to get some answers that are going to lead to more business. So it's all relevant, gang, right? There is no shortcut. I think that's really what people are asking is, is, uh, is there a shortcut to getting stock? No. In a, in a word, no. Now, can you accelerate it through volume and consistency and so on? Yeah, 100%. It doesn't necessarily have to take you ages to get some momentum. However, what I'm going to go through very, very quickly is a couple of different things that um, you need to bear in mind with whenever you do do any type of prospecting, all right? And this will help you, I reckon, to maybe give yourself a little bit of a better chance of getting seen, all right, and getting some stock. So, 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 so. I've got a couple of people that are on the show already. Ty, everything works if you work it, 100%. Uh, Steve Carroll, thanks for joining me, my man. As to your question, working social media hard in association with good old-fashioned human factor activity. Social media is not a quick fix, though. And this guy runs a digital firm, all right? So you have to build value to your audience. I could not agree more. So many people, too many agents have gotten lazy by just thinking that by posting on social media and then hitting that blue boost button with a simple geographical boundary, they think that that is, that is going to get them all of the traction that they need. It could not be further from the truth, all right? Could not be further from the truth. We need to be making sure that we are attracting and connecting with our entire audience. Now, you may say, well, the vast majority of my audience is on Facebook, so therefore, da 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 it's going to be irrelevant if you, even if you, even if, right, you post. So most agents that I talk to, they'll say to me, so Andy, do you reckon I should be posting like, like three or four times a week or whatever? And, and, I'm, or, and I'm saying to them, gang, three times a day is probably not going to be enough. If all you're doing is social media, if you're not posting nine, ten times a day, you're going to get nowhere with it. Because the way that social media works is your feed is just this constant waterfall, this constant cascade of posts. Unless someone happens to be looking at their Facebook page at the very time that your picture comes up, it ain't going to happen. So that's one of the main reasons as to why you can't rely on social media for everything. Everybody in Facebook land needs to go harder, but you need to be thinking about what Steve just said is how am I offering value, okay? Now, there's a difference, and I'm gonna sort of go backwards with a couple of things that I was gonna say, talk about here. There's, there's a distinct difference between prospecting and branding, okay? The, almost the entire industry gets this, gets this mixed up. They think that prospecting is branding and branding is prospecting which is so not correct, all right, guys and girls? It's just so not correct. Let me tell you the difference, all right? So when it comes to giving value, that's about branding. What, what do you want your brand to represent? Do you want your brand to be represented as a thing of value, okay? How do you want your brand to be represented with alongside certain values that you uphold as an individual or as a business, okay? Ultimately, branding should never be about asking for business, okay? Branding, for me, and this is my humble opinion, branding is all about how can you give as much value as is humanly possible to your ecosystem. And when I say ecosystem, I ain't just talking about your little farming area. I'm not just talking about your potential vendors. I am talking about the entire community, be it business, social, or otherwise, to whom you serve as a professional, okay? Now, if you've got like, if you say that your business is a small business and we go all over Melbourne, for one, I think that's a hiding to nothing, to be perfectly frank. But more so than that, uh, more so than that, 
you're not giving yourself as good an opportunity to make connections with in the right way at the right level with the right amount of people that are going to make your business sustainable okay you just ain't all right so and what do i mean by so the easiest analogy i've got for this right is my cordial analogy right <laughs> it's a bit yeah a bit odd bit so my cordial analogy if you put a certain amount of cordial into a glass it will taste quite nice quite strong if you put that same amount of cordial into a bath of water you might just about taste it the problem that a lot of people do with a lot of their branding is the fact that they try and put their bit of cordial into an ocean now what do you think the chances are of people being able to taste your flavor slim if that okay so when it comes to your branding you need to make sure that it is relevant and I'm talking really relevant, very specifically relevant to the audience that you are hoping to serve, okay? So that's, that's kind of what branding is all about. Branding isn't about, right, this is not branding. Doing free market appraisals on a, on a DL card and, blanking, and blanket dropping your area, your suburb or whatever, that is not branding. It's kind of not even prospecting, right? It's just kind of like a mishmashy kind of what everybody always used to do. Therefore, that's probably what we should be doing type thing. It's just, it's archaic in its thinking. It's archaic in its delivery. And it's irrelevant now. It's irrelevant. It's not branding. It's not prospecting. Now, prospecting. So branding is about giving. Prospecting is about the ask. Prospecting is when you are digging for gold. Hence why people that go try and find gold, they call that prospecting. Loads of people don't even get the distinction between the two. When you're prospecting, you have to have a mindset of, I'm trying to dig for gold, all right? I'm trying to dig myself opportunities to win business. And that's why we can't be necessarily like bashful about it but we've got to have our mindset appropriately about it. And you've got to make sure that you do both. And you've got to make sure that you're very distinctive when you are doing both. It's no good, right? It's no good trying to do something good for people or sharing information or anything like that. And then just blatantly just going and asking that you want their house to sell. It just ain't, it just doesn't work like that. If you're going to prospect, actually prospect and actually have the mindset of prospecting now prospecting doesn't necessarily mean an act bit of action straight away every part of your funnel needs to be fed so if i did a prospecting session and all i got was three leads that might be doing something in 12 months time initially i got really frustrated but then it sort of penny dropped i'm like well i'm gonna need three i'm gonna need those three i'm gonna need those three bits of stock in 12 months time anyway so i've won but i've just won in 12 months time providing that i nurture it and so on and so forth every single element of your pipeline needs feeding the biggest problem when it comes to prospecting uh when it, in terms of how it is driven is everybody seems to be after the immediate transaction that is when you're going to find it takes a hell of a lot longer to get consistent levels of business. If all you're doing is prospecting for the now. As long as you're prospecting to feed your entire pipeline, you will succeed on a consistent basis. And you will accelerate the level to which you grow as a business within the real estate office that you serve. Okay. So for a lot of new agents that are out there that are really sort of panicking because, you know, they, they want to try and get up and running as quickly as possible. For one, there are no shortcuts to it in any way, shape or form. But two, if you look, you might be worried because you're worried about your boss for saying that they're going to get so they're, they're going to get rid of you and so on and so forth. And if you are a boss, right, and you give someone a crack from scratch. You've got to really have that mindset of how how is his over his or hers overall pipeline looking? How is the overall pipeline looking? You need to judge them on that entire pipeline. 
and also as well as that how they are managing and looking after that pipeline as well if you can see, if you've got decent handle of your data as a, as a boss and you're looking at a young professional and you can see that they haven't got anything coming through in the immediate short term, but in about nine months' time, geez, they're building up some chances there. They are building up some targets there. And they end up with like 10 or 11 or 12 different targets in that sort of nine-month period, that sort of seven, eight, nine-month period. Then you have got an absolute gem in the making on your hands. But if you are a young agent, you need to know the difference between prospecting and branding. And you have to do both. Branding is what you do in order to make those connections real, in, our, in order to let people know who you are as an individual so that they can feel like they can connect with you. Okay? It's taking the brand that pays your bills and putting it into your own personality. You can still toe the line with any type of franchise, right? Whether it's one of the big boys like a Ray Wire or a Harcourt or someone like that, or if, even if it's a little independent, you can still have your own personality and be able to live within any sort of brand guidelines. It's 100% fact. But you've got to get a branding plan organized and a prospecting plan organized. So from an office level, one thing that I found so effective when I was running the office marketing for, for the office that I was working at was that all of the uh, flyers that went, so we did letterbox drops all the time, like regularly, and on all of those letterbox drops, none of them had free market appraisal. In fact, there was a, a two very long runs that I did that didn't even have the word real estate on it because I want the brand to make an impression. I don't want real estate to make an impression because that's everybody else, that's what everybody else is doing. I want my brand to make an impression. If at the end of the day, my brand isn't associated with what it is that I do, my brand is not strong enough. And I've got to work on that. Not the fact that I'm a real estate, but it's a brand, okay? One of the coolest ones that I did was, um, and this is segueing me into my next point that I wanted to make, and one of the really cool ones that I did was I did a set of pop art squared off flyers, okay? Just nice little nice little square numbers with some really cool pop art um, and a very simple, like I think I just put the brand on the back, literally the logo in the back um, and a phone number. Not only did that get us more ins over throughout that run, it also created a groundswell of momentum that carried on through afterwards. And the really cool byproduct is that I saw them being collected by more and more people. Now that's branding, my friends, when people actually collect your DLs. How many of you can claim that you have had your drop cards actually collected actively? How many of you have had people ring you up or ringing the office up asking if you have any more of them now that's a win when we have when we started to have that when we started to have that coming through and we started to have people messaging us on facebook asking if we had more of our baby animal cards that they could have for their kids because we've missed a couple of them that's branding right there so have a think about as an office and as an individual how you're doing your mass marketing and whether you are doing branding or a real hodgepodge, half-assed attempt to try and prospect. Now, this comes segues me through to my next point, okay, which was going to be my first point, and it's all about consistency. But it's not just consistency in terms of the actions that you take, although that is absolutely part of it. It's consistency in both your presence and your message. Consistency in both presence and message. Now, let me break those two down. Now, presence, like I said, that is partly to do with making sure that you have, you are there on a regular basis, more often than your competitors. That was the thing that drove me. I needed to make sure that I was there more often in, in terms of a presence, more often than any of my competitors. 
And the other thing is with message, you need to make sure that whatever you're putting out on one form of marketing is the same across every single platform. All right. So presence. With presence, you've got to bear in mind that there are three types of learning. Okay. There are three types of learning. And a load of you will know this. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. When it comes to prospecting, when it comes to marketing and branding and what have you, you have got to ensure that in order to in order to give yourself the highest probability of getting the best outcome in terms of all of your effort and the return on investment for said effort, you need to be doing your utmost to try and cater for all three types of learning. You have to. If you rely too heavily, for example, on I don't know, if you rely too heavily on letterbox drops for getting your business. It's a very visual thing, a drop, right? Very, very visual thing. If you're if you're an auditory learner, so for me, in many, many ways, I'm an auditory learner. I will pick up colors and things from a visual point of view, but in the majority of the time, I'm an auditory learner. That's why I like audio books for all the time, right? And podcasts and stuff. That brochure will not even touch the sides with me as a consumer. Okay, why don't you touch the sides? But if someone comes and knocks on my door and, has a, and ends up having a conversation with me, it might have irritated me a little bit, but God, I'm gonna remember them because I've had a conversation with them. I've listened to them. Same can be applied for your social media. It's one thing doing graphics, you've also gotta get your voice heard as well. You've gotta get it out there a little bit more. All right, like I've made me and Stevie Carroll had this conversation. There's barely 10% of people that are using video right now. And that's one of the best ways to get your brand out there because it's who you are, right? People can hear you. So, gang, you've got to pay attention to the three types of learning. And this is where traditional bread and butter tasks are still super important. Now, when I did my hotspot prospecting, so if, if, I, if I've got a listing in a farm in my farming area or if uh, one of my competitors had a listing in my farming area, I made sure that I always did a drop, a knock, and a call around every single one. Now, if you notice, there's three of them, and there's three types of learning, and they happen to coincide. So a phone call is an auditory thing. A drop is a visual type thing. The door knock is a bit more of a kinesthetic thing. It's the action of actually getting involved with someone, right? And it's it's by far and away, if you can do that consistently, make sure that you do a drop, a knock, and a call at every single hotspot, you'll get yourself momentum really, really quickly because boards breed boards. But it's the fact that you have applied the same message to every single element of your prospecting in with when it comes to that side of things okay so you've got the same message going across your phone as you have going across your drop as you have going across your door knock in that one particular area now here's the kicker you need to make sure that if you're going to have one message you need to make sure that it is sent out there in those forms as quickly as possible because if you it right and this is where people generally tend to do a bit of a scattergun approach and it just doesn't work. You might, for example, put your drops out for a just listed, right? You've got just listed drops. You might put them out for number one Smith Street uh, on uh, week one. And because all of a sudden you get really busy, you might then not end up doing the calls for those drops until week two and a half. This is what's happened so often. The problem is, right, People may have seen that drop, glanced it, and then thrown it in the bin. Once they've glanced it, it's going to be in their short-term memory bank for not very long. You therefore need to make sure that you follow that first bit up with the second bit of, of reinforcement, which would be a phone call or a drop, and then followed by the third reinforcement immediately after that. So every single, so what I used to do was I had every single hotspot, I would attack three ways in three days. Three ways in three days. Now, was I precious about what time I did it? No, because I haven't got everybody's diary to hand. 
But what I made sure that I did was that I got them done every time. So one Smith Street would get a drop on Monday, it would get a call on a Tuesday, it would get a knock on a Wednesday. And then I would flow everything on from there and I would have my prospecting plan laid out in terms of my traditional prospecting. I would then know exactly what I needed to post on my individual Facebook page as well. Because I, was no, I knew that I was going to be doing this, and this property at this point, that property in the middle of the week, this property towards the end of the week. Okay? Realistically speaking, gang, you should be able to take care of at least five hotspots, three different ways. That's 15 forms of prospecting within the Monday to Friday. Shouldn't be, it's, it should be done. Um, you know, there's, unless, unless you are absolutely bogged down with appraisal after appraisal after appraisal, day after day after day after day after day, which not many, if any, are, then there really shouldn't be an excuse, there really shouldn't be a reason why you can't do that. Now, consistency in terms of your message also applies to the graphics that you use. So, for example, I'll go back to that pop art example that we had. If on our, we had our little pop art thing go, go out, and that used to run over a two-week period, right? And so it was every two weeks that we'd send another one out. So for that two weeks that we were sending one particular graphic out, we'd have that across our social media pages. Because then it allows people to recognize it in their letterbox. They will then see it on their social media page, make a connection. They go, oh, what's that about? I think the general rule is that your brand needs to be seen about seven or eight times in order for anybody to really register it. So you've got to think about how, how, how you can get your message or your branding, whether it's prospecting or branding, put across in as many different ways as possible in a shorter time frame as possible. The longer you leave it between drinks of the same message, the harder it's going to be to create any form of momentum. By having some degree of a structure in place that provided you with a level of consistency in terms of the branding, in terms of the prospect, in terms of your message, in terms of your, in terms of your, um, uh, your presence, you're going to accelerate your business so, so quickly, so quickly. If you keep scattergunning and going to the next new shiny thing, it ain't going to work. It is not going to work. And if you spend, you can't go spending, I've done this, so this is a mistake, so learn off it. If you think that a real nice, shiny, however many thousand dollar production video or something like that's gonna get you anywhere as well, because some people have managed to execute it incredibly well, like Christian Gravias at Collings in Northcote, like Dan Lee at Plum Property up in Brizzy. Um, there are very, very few people that can rely solely on video because of the fact that they're just that gifted at them. The vast majority of us need to be making sure that we're doing more than just a video. Don't put all of your eggs into one basket. If you are limited on budget, which a lot of us are, you need to be making sure that you are conservative and you make sure you're spreading your budget out as much as you possibly can, getting across as many mediums as possible with a very consistent and timely message that is relevant to the right audience. So another thing that I would also do, if you're a single, if you're an agent going out, you know, rocking and rolling by yourself on the front line, and you've got a farming area, break your farming area down into different patches and make sure that you rotate through the patches with your general marketing, branding and prospecting, okay? That was, that was an absolute winner for me. I broke mine down, and thankfully, mine broke down quite handily into six different this six different estates, which I could broadcast to very specifically. So I would every time I did some branding in a particular area, it would always be relevant to that particular estate. Sounds like sounds really difficult. Sounds like a hell of a lot of work, but it's not if you actually get a little bit organised. It's really not when you get into a rhythm. It's actually really easy when you get into a rhythm because you don't have to think about it as much. Okay, so if anybody has any issues or, or any questions around anything that I've just talked about or they want to talk about their prospecting plan specifically, feel free to send me a DM or send me a text message and we can organize a, uh, a free phone call and we can just quickly have a, have a run through things that you're doing and things that I can perhaps suggest. Now, last thing, gang, before I let you go is 
I want to break pattern. Tomorrow night, there will be no Ask Andy. There will be no Ask Andy tomorrow night, I'm afraid, campers. Why? Because we are going to be celebrating, we're going to be celebrating the success that my daughter's had. So Eliza is going back to school on Monday and she has managed to get through a period of time, i.e. a lockdown, a hard lockdown. She's managed to get through a hard lockdown as a five slash, and she turned six during the lockdown. She's managed to get through that and handle herself with such grace, it goes way beyond the six small years that she's been on this planet. So gang, we're gonna be celebrating and having ourselves a little party, a little slumber party tomorrow night. So there is going to be no Ask Andy because my daughter is way more important, don't take offense, but she's way more important with pretty much any of you, as I'm sure you can appreciate. However gang, however, if anyone has a question. This is how I will repay you for miss it for, for me dropping the ball tomorrow night. If anybody has a question, I'm going to post in the uh, in the comment section of the video a link to my calendar, a link to my diary. You can book yourself a free 15 minute conversation where you can just ask your question. And you can book it at your own leisure whenever you want to book it. You can see it, you'll be able to have, see all of the availability that I've got. You can book yourself in with a free 15 minute phone call as a result of me not turning up for Ask Andy tomorrow night. I think that is a fair trade. All right, gang? So please take me up on it. You're more than welcome to. You're a bit silly if you don't, if you ask me. I'll pop it. I'll pop this. I'll pop the link into. I'll pop the link into the heading and the and the description. I'll also pop it into the comment section as well, and I'll post it tomorrow. Also, book yourselves in for a free fifteen minute phone call. Ask your question directly, and I'll be able to answer it way more specifically as well. All right, then, campers. I'm gonna love you and leave you. All the very best for the rest of your evening, whatever is left. Thank you so much to Matt LaHood, by the way, for giving me uh, some of his time, his wisdom, his knowledge, just his really, really, really good vibes. He's, he's such a good bloke. Um, thank you so much to him. And, and gang, I'll be here Monday night, eight to nine o'clock, sorry, Australian Eastern Standard Time. But if you miss me that much, you can catch me on propertytv.io. 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time for Property Line. And I'm going to be your new host on that show. Really, really pumped for that. So, gang, take care, all right? Please take care of yourself and each other. If you've got lots of action on the weekend, wish you all the very best for all of that action. Please, though, gang, stay safe. Make damn sure you stay healthy and do all of the right protocols at all times. Most importantly, though, my friends, Stay happy. All right then, gang. Take it easy.